New South Wales Rail Corp is the nation's biggest rail service and also the most notorious. The system has a bad enough reputation with its timetables, but now the state's corruption watchdog, ICAC, says it's got a major problem with corruption. The eight-week ICAC inquiry, which wrapped up today, heard evidence that rorting within the system is entrenched and that up to 30 staff in one section alone have cost taxpayers at least $7 million. It's the fifth corruption inquiry into the organisation in a decade. Deborah Cornwall reports. For months now, there's been a steady procession of desk clerks and track workers frog marched into the witness box at the ICAC. But across the board, they seem bound together by this glue in Railcorp, this culture of mateship and, as Chris Ronalds has said, of cover-up. Council assisting the Commission, Chris Ronalds, has levelled charges at more than 20 witnesses, from bodged overtime claims to grandiose schemes involving millions in kickbacks from contractors. Serious long-term timesheet fraud, docket and invoice fraud, theft of Railcorp property, gross manipulation of Railcorp's procurement policies. It's the fifth time in a decade the Commission has investigated corruption in the New South Wales Railways. This latest inquiry shining a light on just one division of Railcorp, the Asset Management Group, which hires outside contractors for track maintenance. If this is just one division in Railcorp, God knows what's going on across the rest of the organisation. It's remarkable how brazen a lot of these employees have been in the scams that they've set up. Commissioner, prior to when the inquiry began last November, Chris Ronalds estimated the collective frauds had cost Rail Corp close to $7 million. Yesterday, she revised that figure to more than $19 million for improper contracts alone. Sweetheart deals that had reaped at least $3 million in kickbacks for Rail Corp staff. The public treasury has become a personal ATM from which they withdraw at will. Among the parade of staffers dragged to the inquiry were three managers with major gambling habits. In three separate scams with contractors, they are accused of embezzling Rail Corp out of two and a half million dollars. One of the managers, Rene Hughes, had siphoned more than $600,000 out of the system in just 20 months using Railcorp's corruption-proof software to pay herself kickbacks through fake invoices. The interesting thing was Railcorp was actually warned about Renee Hughes and her behaviour in 2004, warning that she had to be watched. Instead, she was promoted. Out on the track sites, the rorts were more of a team effort, including the wide-scale theft of copper wire by workers under the supervision of George Laidlaw, a track manager. The Commission heard Laidlaw had divvied up the proceeds of the theft, but his workers, it seems, were less than grateful. Uh, uh, with all that sort of sh his power f and kicks that he's on, that's what's going to bring him undone. His power tricks, George's. Hmm. I'm the boss, don't go behind my back. I'm the one that sh and tells you what you're doing. I'm your boss. I am. I am. God. I am. <laughs> <laughs> But the inquiry was told the wire copper theft was small time compared to Laidlaw's own scams, including fake travel claims which had cost the organisation tens of thousands of dollars. Some of Laidlaw's contractor mates also caught the investigators' attention, including former Railcorp staffer Brett Schliebs, who had resigned in disgrace over dodgy wage claims. Hello, Possum. What are you doing, Georgie Porgy? You got another job that I can string out for a couple of months? As far as railways, as far as railways, this job would have been finished in about two weeks, three weeks. I'm not railways, I don't care anymore. Look, I can fix you with any team you want, you know. I know that, George, you buddy. But the inquiry heard Brett Schliebs did some of his best work off-site. On at least one occasion, investigators tracked his phone calls to the Twin Peaks strip parlour in the red light district of King's Cross. Asked to explain why he'd spent eight hours there on a workday, Mr Schlieb said he'd gone there for lunch. 
This inquiry has shown a culture of cover-up and corruption that's so entrenched, many of the witnesses didn't seem to realise they were doing anything wrong. They said knocking off early or claiming fake overtime was standard practice at Rail Corp. Look, the staff of 13,000, that's a fraud bill that's almost impossible to calculate. The recently departed head of Rail Corp, Vince Graham, yesterday admitted corruption had not been identified as a major problem under his watch. The organisation, he said, was so dysfunctional, most of his five years had been taken up with crisis management, trying to prevent a repeat of two train disasters which killed 14 people in the last decade, and harder still, trying to get Sydney's notoriously unreliable trains to run on time. So there really is a culture at Railcorp that the government, the state government, has never been able to crack. Deborah Cornwall with uh, that report. The AFL is celebrating its 150th season, making the game the oldest surviving football competition in the world. This weekend, the event will be marked by an Indigenous round with a special match between Essendon and Richmond called Dreamtime at the G. But the celebrations have reignited a long-running debate over the sport's origins. Some historians believe it was adapted from early rugby. Others say it was influenced by an Aboriginal sport